Yeah, I think it's recording now. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, last few days. Oh, before that, just to give you a reminder, uh, I think uh, tomorrow we have uh, exam. OK, so tomorrow there will be no class. OK, so the last few days we have been discussing about random variables. OK, and we talked about. OK, so. Random variables. And we said this can be of two type. One is discrete. And this is uh, continuous. And we said that in order to deal with the discrete sample space or random experiment in which number of possible outcomes is discrete, meaning it is either it is either finite or countable infinite, then you call it discrete. Otherwise, if it is uncountably infinite, so the space, the ample space is continuous. Then we call the random, corresponding random variable is also a continuous random variable. And we develop the concept of what is called PMF. So basically probability mass function. And uh, we had a picture for that and we said, okay, histogram, okay. So here's a picture for that. And for continuous instead of mass, we had uh, density. So it's called PDF, probability density function. And then we talked about CDF, which is cumulative distribution function because PMF is also called a distribution function. And similarly here, we also had CDF, which is cumulative density function or distribution function. So in general, we can say probability distribution function and cumulative probability distribution function or just cumulative distribution function. And we said, okay, so whenever we are talking about discrete, so this is an important function. So this is the important quantity, the PMF. And then we talked about capital F, which is the CDF. And here we said, okay, when you talk about continuous sample space or continuous random variable, then we always look for probability of this kind of an event, which can be calculated by using integration, which is integration from A to B, fx dx. Okay, so here, I mean, in both the cases, small fx is the distribution function, and from which we can define, of course, the cumulative. So fx, which is essentially the sum of all x, or maybe t, when t is less equal to x. And here, it is just replace this uh, sum of the series by the integration. So it is minus infinity to x, f to dt. Okay, and then uh, last day we ended with a question. The question was, how can we gainfully use the concept of uh, PDF and CDF to determine properties of the random variable or of the random corresponding random experiment? That's where we ended last week. And now today we'll talk about how to use these uh, functions to determine properties corresponding to the random variable. Okay, just a uh, brief, I mean, let us recall just what is a random variable. I think you know it by, by, by today. I think you should know it, but let me just recall what is that. It is random variable is something, something like some data points, so which is given to you some some numbers, which is given to you, and you want to analyze those numbers. And these numbers, uh, they don't come from sky, but they come from a random experiment. Okay. For example, I mean, if I consider the sample space to be set of all students in this course, then I can define a random variable, which is like, okay, so the marks obtained by the students. OK, uh, in the first, first uh, class test, or maybe 
in the second class test. And then I can also say, okay, I can define another random variable which represents, let's say, total marks, okay? Sum of all the marks in all the class tests. So say you are an abstract concept, so you are a sample point, but corresponding to you, I generate a number. Now my business will be to analyze this data, data of total marks or the marks of in class test one or class test two, whatever it is, and to gain some meaningful insights about the data. So let's say, okay, how many students have done well in class test one, but not in class test two, or maybe overall, what is the performance of all the students, something like that. So my values change because I'm defining new random variables, but you remain fixed. So let's say you are the set of students, okay? So you remain fixed, but I define new new numbers, okay? And correspond to each of these numbers, correspond to each of these values, measures, I have a random variable. And we can analyze those set of data points. So this is what happens in real life. You are given a set of data points, and this data came from some measurement, okay? Some measurement corresponding to some experiment. And then your job will be to analyze the data and gain some insights, like what is happening, what is going on, how to analyze this data, okay? And this set of data points is actually called the random variable, okay? This is how we have got it. So, so the random variable defines, so the, the way one got that values, okay? Corresponding to each of the sample points. And that, that depends on the context, whatever the context. Sometimes you don't need to define a random variable, the data points are given to you. And in some real occasion, what will happen is you also have to generate the numbers, and that's a big deal, okay? So here, what we're doing is right now, suppose the random variable is given to you, the set of data points you already know, and then how to analyze the set of those data points, okay? Yeah, so today, first, we'll consider the concept of expected value of a random variable, okay? So, let us now define expected expected value, or sometimes also it is called weighted average expected value of a random variable. Okay. Now, what is this? <clears throat> Suppose, I mean, the mathematical, so sometimes also it is called expectation, mathematical expectation, instead of calling it an expectation, because expectation can be about anything. So here we are talking about regarding a random variable. So it is a mathematical expectation of the random variable. Okay. So since, so let, let me, let me consider an example. Let's say X, okay, uh, gives me these values. So let's say X1, X2, dot, dot, dot. Some, I have some N items, let's say this is finite. So these are the corresponding values. I have X1, X2. This, has, this is what I have defined, these corresponding values, okay? And it doesn't mean, as, I, as we said before, that it doesn't mean that this is a one-on function. Like if you have N sample points, then only you'll get N such points. It's not like that. I mean, there can be more than one sample points corresponding to those sample points, you can generate one value also. That is also possible. But this is what is given to me, okay? Now, the thing is, this is a set of data points you can consider for the case of at least discrete random variable. Now, the thing is, I want to analyze these points, these values, x1, x2, xn. And this, if this is, if this is what is called a discrete random variable, okay? And then I'll try to extend the definition uh, of expected value or the expectation of this random variable into continuous domain, I mean, for the continuous random variable. And that's, this is very simple, the expected value. So let me write this as a definition. I'll say, uh, if, X is a, if X is a discrete random variable, X is a discrete random variable, okay? And let's say Fx is the PMF, that means the probability mass function, Okay, that means correspond to this x1, I'll have some value probability of x equal to x1. Okay, and I have corresponding values probability of x equal to x2 and so on. 
I'll have also value like this, so which is like f of x1, small f, then uh, f of x2, and so on, small f, f of xn. Okay. Okay, this is a PMF uh, corresponding to F. F, uh, not F, but X. X, the random variable. Then the expected value, expected value of X is just will denote it by e x e of x because expectation is also a function in fact in most of the i mean in almost all, all the courses in mathematics what you have done here i think uh, now you have understood that what are mathematicians define something they take the help of a function because you have to generate the value for different sample points okay i mean for different for different inputs what is the output so whenever you have a situation of input output it always can be described as a function, okay? So here I can also say expectation is also a function because expectation of a random variable. So once the argument of expectation as a function is the random variable. So if I change the random variable, my expectation may change, okay? So I'll write it like E of X, the expectation of X, which is sum of X, X FX or F. So X times FX, okay? What are those X? Those x are those x1, x2, xn. Those are those values. Okay, these are x1, x2, xn. Let's say so. These are the values. So, or if it is countable infinite, it is x1, x2, dot, dot, dot. Okay, it up to it is up to infinity. Whatever the values are. So this gives me again one value. Okay, and it's giving me some information about the entire random variable. And this is what is called expectation for the discrete one, a discrete random variable. And if x is continuous. So this sum will just change to uh, uh, an integration. That's what the difference is. So if x is a continuous random variable, random variable, okay, then expected value of x is integration minus infinity to infinity, x f x dx. Okay, why why are we interested in this number? Because suppose I give you a set of points and then I ask you what is the average value of this? But when, what is the concept of average? Let's say, so I have these points, x1, x2, xn, okay? So if I have x1, x2, some points, you give me any value, some, some values, okay? Some numbers you give me and you ask me to find its average, then what do I do? I take, average, I define average of this as what? So what is the number of numbers here? That is n. So I take x1 plus x2 plus dot, 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 plus xn divided by n. This is my average, okay? So average gives me some information about all the data points, okay? So I can say like it is uh, lying somewhere, which is the average value. So maybe it is, I mean, in the sense of, let's say if I have different kinds of distance from certain point, then I can say, okay, it is the midpoint kind of a thing, okay? So... Uh, then actually what it means is that it is 1 by n times x1 plus 1 by n times x2 plus dot 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 1 by n times xn. So that means now this value is a non-negative quantity, okay? In fact, this is positive, 1 by n. So what is happening is whenever x1, x2, xn, these data points, okay, these values, they're all equally likely then this one by n is actually the probability of obtaining the first one, the first value xn, and then x2 is for the second value, okay? For that, the probability is also one by n, and xn also has the probability one by n. So these are basically the values, probability of x equal to x1 times x1 plus probability of x equal to x2 times x2 plus dot 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 plus probability of x equal to xn times xn. So I am what I'm doing here, so this is a general concept. So so this is basically to just see the definition. This is basically x times p of x equal to x. 
So meaning the value, this is sum of the product. And what is this? X time its probability. So X is the corresponding outcome or the data point, the value corresponding to the random variable, which corresponds to an outcome and the, the probability of its happening. Okay, and this is what the meaning of this expected value is. So expected value is nothing but and weighted average because this is these numbers are can can be thought of as weights. How much weight I should give to this value, let's say x1. So this is the weight, okay? Px equal to x1. This is weight. Similarly, this is the weight corresponding to x2. And then this corresponds to weight. Uh, this 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 represents weight corresponding to xn. So this can be thought of as an weighted average. Okay, so when you always ask the question, what is the average value? Okay, then we always give this answer. But here, assuming the fact that all the possible outcomes, okay, all the, here the numbers, they are all equally likely. They have the same probability of occurrence. So then this is the average value. For example, okay, whenever I have these numbers, let's say total marks, if I want to compute the average, okay, so then I am assuming that each student, each student is equal in terms of opening marks. So then I say it's an average. But suppose I found out that, okay, some student did well in class test one or did well in first two or three class tests, but he did terrible bad in the last class test or let's say the fourth class test. My expectation may change because I thought, okay, this guy may be doing well due to something Okay, I don't know. Okay, due to something, and he could not do well in the fourth. So then the probability of at the last test, let's last class test, a probability of securing a good marks. Okay, was it high or low? If I consider it as high, then I have to accordingly average it. So I have to put some weight for each of the students based on something, based on let's say their performance in the previous exam or the previous year or whatever it is. Okay. So if once we once we once we add an additional feature, that means I'm not treating all the students equally. Okay. And then I have the concept of average, and which is scientifically true, because all I mean we discussed a lot of examples where where all outcomes are not equal. Okay. And same thing is also true for EX when X is, I mean expectation when it is X is a continuous random variable, because it is talking about the area. So X times FX, so this is a new curve, okay? Again, it is, you consider it is just like average weighted kind of area, okay? And then, so from FX, you define a new function GX, and then you do that, okay? But this definition is completely clear. If you, if you, if you have, uh, I mean, if you just uh, see the picture of the histogram, okay? So there was this rectangle and there was an area, and we define the probability as the area where, where the base rectangle, the base was uh, unit length. So here, the base, the, the 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 length of the base can change. So because it can be from any to any number a to b. So the event could be a less equal to x less equal to b. But it it is the same interpretation. It is the area when the base is from a to b, which is fixed. The length is b minus a, depending on whatever function a is defined. Uh, during that interval it to be. So it is just a continuation of the definition of discrete. So it is easy to explain uh, this for the case of discrete random variable and for the case of continuous and we will assume that, okay, this is an extension of that and this is explaining the same thing because when you discretize the continuous domain, you get back the same value. So this is a, a generalized idea of the same thing. Okay, but let me tell you that this expected value and average, let's say, for example, average can be very, very dangerous. For example, I mean, I can give you a situation where this average value is a good thing to know, but it is not everything about the set of points. So why is that? Because, for example, suppose I have uh, two persons out there, okay, in a family, okay, two brothers. And let's say the elder brother, okay, uh, he earns, let's say, one lakh per month, and the other guy, Okay, he only let's say earns approximately thirty thousand per month. But if we take the average, the average will be very very high. So this average is not a good representation of the data points. So why it is happening? Because your sample space is very very small. Because it's thirty thousand. But if you take the average, so it will be thirty plus one lakh. So it will be one lakh thirty thousand divided by two. So it will be approximately sixty five thousand. 
but 30,000 and 65,000, there is a big difference. So the 65,000, this average value, this does not say any, this does not give you any clue that this 30,000 is far, far lower than 65,000, okay? So expected value or this average value, it makes a lot of sense when you have a good sample, a good number of sample points. So you have enough number of sample points to analyze the data because, but sometimes it could it could create problem about visualizing the data or analyzing the data if you have very, very small sample space, okay? Very, very small. Sometimes sample space, also number of sample points or that way you have designed the sample points that makes a lot of sense when you are analyzing the data. So you have to be really, really careful when you are picking the sample sample points, okay, corresponding to a particular random variable. Now, sometimes what happens is, let's say, uh, I'm, let's say, interested about, let's say, your total marks, but I don't care whether you have got 35.5 or 35, okay, or whether you got 67.5 or, or, or 67. So if I do that, that means, suppose your value, total marks is uh, 67.5, but what I'm doing is I'm rounding it off, meaning I can say 67.5, I can make it to 68 or I can make it to 67 in order to just have a nice uh, representation of all the integer values. OK, let's say my grading system, let us assume that my grading system is like all the students who have scored more than 90 will get, let's say, EX or less than 40 will get F. OK. So then an integer make a lot of sense. So then what I'm doing is, although I had a random variable x, let's say, but I am now defining a new random variable, which is, let's say, x plus some 0.5, okay? This is with respect to the, so this is my, let's say, new random variable, which is x plus 0.5 for certain x, okay? For some x, that means for some, for some small x, I'm doing that. So basically this function is y equal to x plus. 0 0.5 when the small x represents only one sample point and this capital X represents the entire sample points, okay? Because capital X represents the random variable. So this capital Y represents a new random variable. So I can always say, okay? Or, or let's say I want to give extra marks to everybody, some five marks or so let's say, I think everybody has attended uh, all the lectures, almost all the lectures. So I'm very happy that, okay, at least everybody has attended the lectures, okay? <laughs> so, and I mean, in a physical class, this is very interesting. I mean, I, I found it very, very interesting. In physical class, I mean, maybe 40% to 50% or I, I mean, if I'm lucky, maybe 60% students are attending the class. But in online classes, I found it's that, okay. Two for our class. Oh, what is that? There are five marks for class attendance. <laughs> no, no, I'm just giving an example, ad hoc example. So I, I'm not doing anything because the grading policy is not decided. I'm just giving an example. Okay. So in fact, if you ask me personally, I don't care who attends or not because I only think I, I think that okay, if you come to my class, whatever I'm discussing, I'm discussing it like for the sake of me as well as for the sake of you. Because if I discuss, I learn, and if I discuss, you also learn. Okay. But somebody may feel that, okay, uh, this is waste because I, I don't suppose somebody can think that I don't give good lectures, but he can learn it from somewhere else, so attending some other's lecture or from maybe some lectures on YouTube. He or she doesn't feel like attending my lecture, and this is perfectly fine with me because at least he or she is learning from somewhere else, assuming that he or she is learning from somewhere else. So I don't care whether you attend or not. Okay, my, my lecture, okay, that is fine with me. So I don't usually give marks for attendance, but whenever there are a lot of, I mean, more than one section and different teachers have different views about the grading and then, okay, I, I always do that. I will follow the uniform grading policy. Otherwise, I mean, I don't care much about the attendance. Okay, this is my personal view. So I always assume that students are, you know, eager to learn and they'll learn it from somewhere. Even if they are not interested today, maybe tomorrow he'll find it interesting and he'll learn it from somewhere else. So, I mean, nobody stops, you know, want to learn something, okay? Because we have a huge resource, okay, everywhere. So just type it in Google and everybody can learn for, from a lot of places, okay? So that's not a big deal. Yeah, so whenever I'm doing this, so what I'm doing actually, so I am not analyzing the original random variable now, I am creating a new random variable and that I'm analyzing, okay? 
So that means this y, this new random variable, is a function of the original random variable. So it is not always uh, always right or always not uh, uh, always not uh, demanding to analyze the values, the data points you have got. You can manipulate the values a little bit and then maybe you can analyze the data and get back to the original data. So you modify the data points, okay? And if you do a little bit of modification, then the values, of course, will change whatever analysis you want to do. For example, if you want to compute the expected value and if you, if you just modify those original values, so definitely you, will, you are going to get a different expected value. And then the, the question will be, okay, from that, uh, what can you find out about the original data? Okay, what can you explain? What, uh, I mean, what are the things you can see uh, or determine about the original data? Then, okay, this is also sometimes possible. So, we can generalize the concept of um, expectation not only for a random variable but also a function of a random variable. Okay, and this function of random this concept concept I would say is very very important. I mean, this concept of function of a random is very, very important when you will see, I mean, if you do any course on information uh, theory, or if you are interested in quantum information or in terms of processing or any communication system, uh, then what, what, uh, there is a situation like where you have to transmit some data points from one place to the other place. Okay, now let's say, uh, let's say there is a guy and there is another guy and this guy wants to send some data points to this guy, okay? And somehow this guy can manipulate the data. Let's say this is uh, Alice and this is Bob. I'm giving this, this name because they are two celebrities in the theory of information and communication, where we always take the example of Alice and Bob. So Alice wants to send some data, something to Bob, then Alice can manipulate the data, okay? And can do something. Or Bob also can do, do some manipulation about the received data after receiving the data and can find out what was actually being sent, okay? So this is always possible. I mean, this is a very demanding thing. This is very, 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 very physical. This is very, very real that we always do that when we talk about a, talk about a communication system because what happens is this channel through which the data is passing, this is a noisy channel. And so there is always a chance that your original data may get destroyed during the transmission. So there is a lot of things which you can do if you if you do a course on information theory, and then you'll get to know a lot of things that this this is a very very I would say it's a very important concept. Whenever we say it's a it's a function of a random number, meaning actually you are manipulating your own data just to make let's say communication secure. Okay, or something doing doing a good with a good purpose. Okay, so this is always a nice thing to do. Okay, so this is an, also an example, so which is which is very very important in in communication theory. Okay, or say in uh, communication so channel. Yes. So is the expectation of a function of a random variable equal to the function of the expectation of that random variable. So let's say a random variable has expectation 5. So the expectation of f of random variable would be equal to f of 5. Okay, I'm going to define it. I actually, this is a theorem. Yeah, I'm, this is my next statement. How to, how to get it? How to get the uh, expected value of the random variable y when you know the expected value of the random variable x or you know the PMF okay of x and you know the function how y is defined in terms of small x or more small y is defined in terms of small x how you know how the function is defined let's say then how to get the expected value of the original uh, of the or the modified function or the modified data okay i'm going to state the theorem this is a theorem because you can prove it okay but i'm not going to prove it i mean it will take not much time but anyway this is not necessary but if you if you are interested you just can find out anywhere i mean any book or, or any document, uh, I mean, any lecture note, you can find it out. So I'm going to define it now. So if, uh, let's say, x is a, a discrete random variable, discrete random variable, so I'll write r dot v dot, it means random variable, and fx is the corresponding PDF, uh, PMF, 
corresponding PMF. Okay, then the expected value, expected value of G of X. Now see here, I am writing G of capital X because this capital X is a random variable and G of capital X is a function which will give you another random variable. Okay, is this. So I will write it like expectation of G of X and I'll write it sum of all X, GX times FX. See, it is nothing. I mean, just the extension of the original definition because I have a new function, okay? So let's say that is Y or new random variable, which is Y, then it has to be Y times that, the corresponding PMF. But this PMF is the original PMF, okay? Because original you had the original data point. You are only changing the, because you are not changing the probability of X, okay? You are not changing the probability of happening. You are only changing the values, okay? So you are getting the same expected value here. It is just sum of, sum over X, GX times FX. And if X is continuous, uh, continuous random variable with PDF, let's say, FX, then, or you can just write F, then expectation of GX can be defined as minus infinity to infinity GX FX DX. So, yeah, so because you are not changing the prob uh, probability, you are only changing and uh, modifying the values, okay? So that's the proof. I mean, that's the only, the, that's the proof actually. But even if you if you want a formal proof, then you can also do that. Okay, so so that means, for example, I mean you can calculate. For example, okay, let us see an example. I mean, let's say uh, uh, the random variable x uh, has has PDF. Let's say this uh, fx, which is let's say e to the power x when x is bigger than zero. Let's see what. Otherwise, then, then, somebody's microphone is on. Okay, now it is off. Then, uh, let's say find uh, expected value of GX. Okay, where let's say gx is equal to e to the power 3x by 4, something like that. So what do we have to do? You have to do only perform integration, right? So so what is the solution? Solution is e of you actually you are calculating expectation of e to the power 3x by 4. So which is zero to infinity because it is zero when it is negative. So e to the power 3x by 4 times e to the power. Oh, it is not e to the power x, but it has to be the minus x, otherwise, it will not be a probability. So, to the minus x dx, which is 0 to infinity, e to the power minus x by 4 dx, which is whatever the value is. Okay. Yeah. So, now the question is okay. Uh, this is uh, every time whenever I define a new function of the original random variable, okay, then every time I need to perform some kind of uh, integration or I have to calculate the sum of a sum of uh, a series. Okay, so this is like a little bit of exercise. Okay, and then the question is like, can we have a ready-made formula? Okay, for some ready-made functions, like the nice looking functions, okay? Uh, can you have a ready-made formula so that we every time we don't have to compute this sum or this integration? And, and this is the good news is that this is also available. So here, formula. Now we'll discuss that. So formula of expectation, expectation of okay, some special kind of functions we'll consider. Okay, of uh, these functions are called actually affine function, but you don't have to. 
know this. I mean, I mean, if you're interested, so you can, of course, affine function, because in some occasions, you may find this word affine, okay? Affine functions. So what it says, you can actually prove this, but I'll write it like observation, okay? You can prove means you can prove from the definition itself. First one, the first observation here is, okay, Sometimes, yeah, my pain does not work. So expectation of some AX plus B. So sometimes you would say this is a linear function, but mathematically when it's a linear function as like when you take this X here, then X plus B will be some kind of line like that. Okay, or some kind of line like that. Okay, some kind of line like that. But mathematically it is not a linear function if you, if you use the definition of linear function. So that's what it's called affine. It is it is a translation of a linear function because A times X is always linear function of X, but not X plus B because B is constant. So, okay, so this is, you can prove using the definition A times EX plus B. So this is a ready-made formula you can have for this nice looking function X plus B where A and B are just real numbers, okay? A and B are some constants. So you have a ready formula for this. I mean, if you just want to prove it, we can just prove it is one line, okay? I mean, just the proof if you want. So, I mean, I mean this man, okay. So let me write expectation of AX plus B. This will be equal to what? This will be equal to mm, minus infinity infinity. Let's say it is continuous. So x plus b times fx dx. And then this can always be said as, okay, some a minus root infinity x fx dx plus b minus root infinity fx dx. So this is a times ex plus, now see, since this small fx is a PDF, so this value is one. So this we talked about that for any PDF, okay, if he's, I mean, for any function, when it is a PDF, it has to satisfy this property. So this integration value is one, so it is always P. That's simple proof. So from this, so we can also say, I mean, this is just a simple observation that if you put B equal to zero, so then you'll have this, so it is scaled. So when you scale a random variable, okay, you take data points and you multiply all the data points by a fixed number, okay? If you scale it, then you just see that the expected value also gets scaled, okay? So it does not change much. And, and another observation from here is if we just have a constant, okay? So this is a constant, okay? Now, can anybody tell me what is the random variable here? I just wrote, because I always said expectation of a random variable, but here I just wrote B. I just said, okay, expectation of B is equal to B. What is the random variable here? So there is no random variable. No, then <laughs> we so define expectation. So x is equal to b. Yes. So it is, we always define expectation value of random variable. The random variable here is all the data points are same. Okay. And that value is b. So when I write expectation of b, it means whenever we had this x so what was that so random variable is a function from sample space to this and suppose this function is defined as, as like uh, b it is constant it's staying constant value for all all the sample points so this is that random variable and then the of course the average value is also with b or maybe the expected value is also with b because all the values are constant fixed so average does not i mean average will not give you anything new because the average is also the same thing because all the data points are the same. Like thing. every sir, every event is equally equally likely for this. Like, uh, no, no, no. I'm not talking about probability here. You see, I'm not talking about the probability here. I'm just saying x x equal to b. I'm just changing this. I'm not if, because of whatever be the probability that will remain be the same. Okay, f x, which will also be the same for, because all all are all are the same points. Let's say okay. So I'm not changing anything here. So it is. I mean, if you just use the formula here. I mean, if you put a equal to zero, okay, the small a scalar equal to zero, then you have the same proof here. You see, you have the same proof. So this part will will just vanish, okay? So you have the same thing. 
So I'm not changing anything. So you just have equal to B. Okay, something get this this instead of just mm, you know, one function, you can have multiple functions and you can have a mark matching LS formula. So you can also prove similar way that if you take this and let's say use some constant and then you have different functions and then you take this. So this is also a new function. Okay, and I equal to whatever. So let's say one to K. So that also has this property. You can just also prove that this is also this. So you are, for example, G1X, let, uh, sorry, GIX. Okay, let me just write it. So the thing is, let's say class test uh, one. So I have some average value, class test two, average value, and then class test five or four, whatever it is. And uh, let's say K here, the Kth class test, I have some value, okay? So I had two different uh, random variables. Okay, for each class test, now I have a sequence of random variables, let's say. Okay, and I change, modify something for each of these class tests. Okay, some marks I add, okay, for each class. There, suppose there was a mistake in the question. Okay, so everybody gets the marks for that question. So if I find that happened for all the, uh, or maybe not all, but some of the class tests, okay, then I had to change the data points for, for the class tests where there was a mistake in the question paper. So I have these functions, G1, G2, G3, G4, G5, and sometimes G, G could be equal to F because I have the same values, data points, because there was no change in marks. And then suppose, and there are two, three exams in class test one, let's say the first test in the last test, there was some changes in the question paper because it was incorrect and I had to give marks to everybody. Then my data points now changed and now I have a sequence of random variables, okay? And so it's new random variable, let's say. And for that, um, calculating this expectation. So it will be just the coefficient will be same. It will be just the linear sum of the corresponding uh, expectation of the new random variables, okay? You can prove it the same way I did I did prove the uh, other one, okay? So it's not a difficult thing to do. In fact, I can, another way possible uh, generalization that expectation of if we just consider some x plus b to the power n, I mean, just, uh, you just use the definition, then you can have this. Just an expansion of this x plus b to the power n, this minimal expansion, so you have the same thing. So a meaning, what is the meaning of this? Why this is, why, why I'm saying this? That nothing special about uh, this affine function, like ax plus b, you can have many such things, okay? I mean, x plus b to the power something also could be there. I mean, many times you multiply and then you add, doesn't matter. So now recall math two, there was a constant linear function, and this is how actually that it was defined. A function is set to be linear, okay? So when this, so, so in math two, so here recall math two, recall math two, and then there was a function from a vector space to another vector space, okay? And this vector space was the same field, and then we said, okay, it is linear, if alpha times some u plus some, some let's say v, this is alpha times t of u plus t of v. And this is what is actually happening here as well. So this is constant, but it is same as e of v, okay? So expectation is acting like a linear function, but we don't have a vector space actually here, but one can define a vector space, okay? Vector space of, let's say, all probability vectors or let's say all random variables, okay? Because, yeah, so sum of two random variables is again a random variable. If you scale a random variable, it's again a random variable. So it will give you a feeling this is the vector space, okay? So yeah, so expectation in that case is acting on a vector space and then it this function is a linear function, okay? So, so the observation here is expectation is a linear function in that case, expectation meaning the ex, the function e, okay, is linear, okay. So, yeah, so expected value will give you some information about your data points. And now we'll define some more functions, but you see here, expectation is defined in terms of the PMF, so, or the PDF. So, unless you know the PMF or the PDF or the set of data points, you cannot define expectation. Okay, you have to know the probabilities of possible uh, points X 
here the corresponding random uh, the, 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 the corresponding the range set of the sample points so like here if you take this is the random variable x to r if you know x is equal to b then for all such values b you have to know this probabilities okay and then all so you have to know the pmf for the pdf then only you can calculate this uh, expectation okay now we'll we'll define some more uh, parameters or the some more numbers okay or some uh, some new diff some new concepts will now define okay to get an insight about the data points okay so the next concept is the concept of moment. Concept of, so you can assume that, or you can, we will we'll discuss this, that this moment is a generalized concept of expectation in some way. Moments. So there is something called moment or moments of a random variable. Okay. And this is how it's defined. So the definition. Okay. Uh, I would say the kth moment, or let me say, yeah. So the kth moment, moment of a discrete random variable variable, as you find is this way, is, uh, okay guys, just a minute. I, Need to take this call. As was. I will take it near so near so. Take it. Hand near so near so. So are you back? Yeah, I came back yesterday morning. <laughs> I came back yesterday morning. So you are in campus, sir? Yes, yes. Now I am in campus, yes. Yeah. Oh. Sir, when is it opening? <laughs> I have no idea. So I also want it to be open, but I have no idea. But at least this semester, I don't see any possibility. <laughs> but is there a chance that we will uh, return in summer? I don't know. Or after? Frankly, frankly speaking, I don't know. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but if I get to know, definitely I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, so now we'll define a new concept, which is called the uh, moment of a random variable. Uh, let's say if it is a discrete random variable x, okay? Then I'll call the kth moment, okay? Uh, the kth moment of a discrete random variable x is given by this number. Let me denote it as mu mu r dashed okay why i am writing a dashed i'll tell you this is an expectation this is the expectation of oh not r here k i am defining it k is x to the power k so now you know what is this value it is x to the power k times f x so instead of just taking the expectation of the random variable itself you make a product of the same value, okay, the same data point, some number of times here, it is k number of times, then, then take the average value, then take the expectation, and then it is called the moment, the kth moment of the random variable. And, mm, okay, the same thing I can define for a continuous random variable, if uh, x is uh, a continuous random variable, continuous random variable, then the moment, uh, the kth moment is defined in terms of uh, the integration. That's it. So it is uh, minus infinity infinity, x to the power k, fx dx. Okay. Now, now why I'm all of a sudden calling it moment? So this moment word is actually from physics. Okay. Now, who can tell me? Any physics student? What is moment? It comes from the field of physics. Yeah. Can anyone tell me what is moment or what is, let's say, moment of inertia or something like that? 
or is moment of inertia so just distance multiplied by okay so a, here the so in moment inertia. in in moment of inertia like if uh, for example if something is i mean a rotatory motion is going on then it relates mm-hmm. the torque to the angular velocity sir uh, i think so, uh, moment of inertia can be defined by taking uh, we can multiply the square of the distance times the mass at that point and then integrate it over all points but uh, more broadly when you ask that question what is a moment uh, so moment i think i'm not sure it's just you know my experience so far yeah, it's go ahead, probably go ahead. a weighted average based on the distance from a central point of any sort of distribution and then you can uh, assign how much weight you want to give to the distance so you can either linearly multiply the distance with the value of the variable and then take an average or or the integral of that or you can multiply the square of it the cube of it maybe even uh, what, th- some fractional power of it so i think moment is something like that so it's like a weighted average with distance okay so, so Anybody, moment yeah so moment yeah. can also be uh, thought of th- thought of is about the turning like or uh, about the turning effect of a force and if you're talking about moment of inertia it would talk about how the distribution of mass about a certain axis is going to affect the turning okay that's good yeah so like, yeah i said uh, when we use uh, moment we usually use it as a tensor matrix i mean because when in dealing with advanced systems things are not very linear so tensor comes in so maybe when like uh, for we have a 2d moment of inertia is scalar like and for a 3d sir it would say uh, 3d like 3d mat- like a matrix tensor for a 3d space yeah 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 okay so let me now come back to mathematics and see how this word moment sir is justified here from whatever you said yeah sir isn't this uh, isn't moment the kth root of uh, what you just wrote yeah yeah so i'm talking about that now <laughs> okay so okay. let's say here somehow x and something is go rotating as somebody said okay then what do you do a uh, little relate to x axis rotating through x axis then the resistance whatever it gets so that's some moment let's a moment of inertia so it is basically x square the distance from this times the mass right but see we talked about already mass function so the mass is actually fx equal to x <laughs> right so it is nothing but x square fx and for all the points x so in fact your mu2 here mu2 dash here is actually or if it is continuous it is the integration okay depending on whether it is uh, uh, real uh, discrete and numerable or continuous and numerable it is just x square fx dx because fx we are said that it is a mass function that means how much weightage is on top of that so this is the mass which is fx here okay oh this is probability of this so fx so how much weight is given to that so this is exactly making sense so and if you what have about moment of force and what about moment of force because uh, torque is moment of force so if yeah. fx is mass then for a moment of inertia it is very obvious that x square is the distance and f of x is mass so okay we get yeah. it but what about yeah. force sir No, 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 no. What I'm saying here is the word here moment comes from moment of inertia. M- mu two dash is actually representing moment of inertia when it fits into that kind of uh, setup or framework. So, uh, yeah. So I, I got that, sir. I'm asking yeah. that does moment of force also come from this thing, or does moment of force originate from moment of inertia? Because <laughs> both are linked. Okay. Now. Oh, okay. so i don't know right now <laughs> that's my answer i don't want to go into that because i don't know okay so maybe we can discuss that later sometime okay sir. okay 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 now from here let's say what is my mu one dash because mu one dash you see this is just expectation so now i have a new meaning of expectation in terms of physics 
if I now, so I already have defined what is called the moment of inertia. Okay, I, I said, okay, this is nothing but the mu2 dash. So that is the second moment of the random variable, which is actual moment of inertia. So that's why I'm calling it moments. But what about the expectation? Who can tell me this? Does it have anything related to center of gravity, let's say? I mean, if we just tweak this number a little bit, whatever I have the definition of expectation, then can I have a concept of center of gravity now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, so sir. I'll, okay, how. I'll. So this is a homework. Does it? Does it relate to? Because even if you don't know this, these are all fine. But since there are students from physics background, so I'm just telling. You. Uh, any relation with center of gravity. Just remember that we call it a mass function, so that's why everything, I mean, the mass word from physics, so I mean, is related to physical objects, so definitely there must be a connection. So, yeah, gravity. Sir, uh, you are asking about mu1, right, sir? Yes, the expected value. Yeah, mu1. Uh -huh. So x f of x. Mu1 dashed. So I'm writing it dashed because I have a new random variable here, x to the power k. Not, yeah, so not it is related to x. So it is a function of x, x to the power k. So that's why I'm writing mu k dashed. You can write mu k also. I mean, when this is clear, I mean, you can yeah. write mu k also. Yes, please go ahead. Sir, so wouldn't it be center of mass? Because x and x and mass is yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. In complex so, system, both are different gravity and I mean, center of gravity and center of mass do not match. Now, now, now come, yes, yes. So when this x is continuous, so then it is something related to density, right? Maybe you so, can write center of mass. Okay. So then the question is, does it make sense when x is? So this is what I explained when it is a, conti a discrete uh, random variable. But if it is a continuous random variable, then where, I mean, is there somewhere the word density is coming into the picture? So for example, I mean, in physics, probably you have studied that length of a lever arm, okay? And then the distance from the origin, and then a moment of inertia of a rod of variable density and so on, okay? So one can relate all those things here, I mean, this is the same thing, whatever we have studied in physics or you have studied in physics. So here we are defining the same thing. We are borrowing the same name because it has a resemblance. I mean, it is the same thing, but here we are talking about data points. So here it need not be, I mean, it has no connection with physics as per, because the data points could be from any, 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 any experiment. But when it boils down to the particular physical experiment of that sort, where moments also make sense, moment in, moments of inertia also make sense, then it is the same thing. So that's why I'm just relating it. I mean, this this word moment does not come from sky. It has a relevance, okay? This is, I just wanted to make sense, okay? And by the way, expectation is also called mean, by the, by the way, okay? So uh, just me just a note here, I forgot to tell you that mu1 or the mu1 dashed is also called mean, okay? Mean of the random variable, random variable x, okay? So expectation have a, a sense now, or maybe in general, expectation is a particular uh, number, okay? Which has some meaning, but, but we can define other numbers like kth moment of the random variable, which will give us Let's say first moment is the expectation, second moment, third moment, fourth moment, so on, so on. And that will also give us some insights, okay, about the data points. And we'll also discuss that uh, maybe, okay, a little later, okay, we'll talk about that. Uh, okay, so another concept is moments about the mean. This is also a new parameter in order to expense set of data points, I mean, a random variable, okay? So now we'll define a new concept, which is called moments around or about the mean of a random variable, okay? So now from the, I mean, from the previous definition, it is clear what should be 
what should be the definition of this quantity, which is moments about the mean. Still, let me just write it. The, let's say the kth moment about the mean of a, let's say, random variable x is who can make a guess? And here we'll write it mu k, not mu k dash. For mu k dash, we have said moment, and here it is moments about the mean. So it is mu only. So what will be this one? Moment. This is moment around the mean. When you say around the mean, that means it is expectation x minus mu to the power k and this mu this mu is the mean okay <laughs> the change of notation so this mean or i can just say mu one test okay the mean the mean of x which is what which is the same definition sum over x x minus mu to the power r fx sorry k fx and this is some oh this will be integration so this has to be minus infinity to infinity x minus mu to the power k fx dx so this is called moments about the mean okay moment about the mean just moment around mean or about mean, sir? About the mean. Moment about the mean. So see, x minus mu one. Mu one dashed is the mean, right? Mean of x. So you have some values, let's say. Okay, you have some probability here, or maybe just forget about the probabilities for the time being. You have some values, x1, x2, x3, x whatever. I mean, it need not become so let's say this is x1 this is x2 this is x3 and so on so there will be a mean value let's say it is here okay or the expected value or the, let's say the average value which is here so now i want to take expectation of this x minus mu one to the power k this function but how do i explain this x minus mu one that means capital x minus mu one it means small x capital x means it will take some value from this x1 x2 this is and so on right so whenever i whenever i write this over all x so it is what i'm doing i'm taking a new function and then i'm doing this x1 minus mu or mu1 test to the power k times fx so let's say i write xi over all i i equal let's say one to here let's say uh, this x1 x2 x3 whatever the number of k let's say it's some k okay or oh, no k is already here let's say it is n so this is an weighted average of this and what is this this is the kth moment about the mean because you are taking a distance from this so how much i mean how much does this xi far from the mean value from the average value and then you are taking a power of that you are taking the moment of that okay so that's what it is about the mean okay so it is moment about the mean and in fact this quantity has a huge importance in statistics moments about the mean meaning what once you have a set of data points so here set of data points these are let's say these are all real numbers okay these are set of data points and then what you have is you have a mean value somewhere here okay somewhere here is the mean value let's say uh, maybe i can change the color so somewhere here is the mean value so then the question is this may not give you a uh, this may not give you a good uh, insight about the data points. So then you look for other values related to this uh, random variable, related to these data points. And one of these is moments about the mean. In fact, when you have a continuous case, let's say you have a distribution like this, then there is a question about the spread, how much spread it this is. So it could be like this, it could be like that, Okay, so how much spread rate it is, or it could be like even this. So how much spread rate it is? Okay, so I mean, if I draw it differently, I mean, in different pictures, then it could be like 
it could be like this it could be like like this okay it anyway so and rest are zero so it can go up to infinity very close to zero or it may be zero at a finite place let's say it is like this it is like this and then everywhere it is zero or from the light and from the rift everywhere it is zero. so it is something like that then the question is the moments around about the mean or let's say just the moments do they have anything to say about this pdf okay or about the distribution how much spreaded how much well spreaded this distribution is or the pdf is over the real axis okay and uh, this is so this is, is something called a skewness or or symmetry okay symmetry or skewness of the distribution okay and this is okay i mean this is not in the syllabus but i can just say a measure of measure of skewness how much skewed the distribution is skewness or sometimes it is called a lack of symmetry lack of symmetry means this 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 one it looks like symmetry okay but you can have highly skewed distribution like this okay so let's say it is uh, something like this it goes so it is highly skewed one sided skewed okay highly skewed so this is lack of symmetry so this this distribution is not symmetric but it looks like a symmetric around this point or symmetric around this point or symmetric around this point yeah a lack of symmetry and you will see that uh, symmetry and you see that uh, this value mu3 divided by i mean uh, sigma cube this is a good measure of skewness and same thing if you takes mu4 that means the fourth or uh, fourth moment uh, about the mean then that is something called kurtosis okay that will also give you an idea about how much uh, peak is so here it is how much spread okay lack of symmetry or how much how much uh, skew this is skew the pdf is and if you want to know how much peak it is so how, what is the peak the peak variance or what about the peak or maybe you can have a distribution like this so there is almost no peak something like this and there is something like this so there is a significant peak here okay so but there is no significant peak here let's say so then to so to get an idea about the peak values of this distribution function so uh, you can have mu4 to the power sigma there four and so on oh i did not define what is sigma so i'm writing it anyway so we can define this later also okay measure of skewness and this i did not define what is this anyway i'll come back to this again maybe so so the thing is uh, all these uh, moments they have uh, importance in data analysis so in, in particular in, in statistics for example uh, how much spreaded a distribution is so this is like skewness i'll i'll talk about what sigma is later on okay and what is kurtosis i will also talk about that but before that let's say i want to measure so this is my question here now how to measure how to measure uh, the spread spread of a pdf that means how much spreaded this uh, distribution is uh, because i'll tell you why why this is important i'll come to that with an example okay so let me define in order to this uh, define this uh, define a measure for this we will introduce a new concept which is called variance okay so this is a new definition is is called variance okay so in fact mu2 that means the second moment about the mean sir yes so like we have uh, i mean in your terminology you used to say that we have well behaved functions and uh, i mean like functions which are very really easy to work with or which which the functions which mathematicians like to i mean when they see they they are not very like so in these types of distribution or data sets are there any types of like uh, 
well behaved data sets or such thing or it is not the case here no 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 there is there is i mean <laughs> this is uh, this is a very good question but um, right now i mean i am not in a position to tell you using the concepts whatever i discussed that using those concepts only i will not be able to tell you that what is called a good data set or called a bad data set okay okay let me say it like this way good data set in a, in a sense that using elementary measures like this whatever i am defining let's say expectation moment this okay you can have good insights about the data and whenever i say about the data it means how it is well distributed how spread it is how much spreaded it is or what is the skewness or what is the peak okay then you have an idea about the function right so how much the data is spreaded over all this uh, values uh, of the sample points okay bad uh, data set is like these elementary statistics like these elementary values parameters they don't give any good insight about the data i mean if you do a course in machine learning then you will see i mean let me just say suppose you have a set of data points and there are only two kinds of data points okay mm, let's say let's say it is like okay let me draw it so like these are all data points okay uh, and okay so you know how to get a better feeling about this let's say uh, i have Okay, so okay, now this is a data point. Okay, now I want to distinguish. Distinguish. Uh, so let's say these blue dots they represent something. So they represent boys. So I did some measurement, some values. Some, there are there. This is a mixed set of students. Let's say. and i defined some kind of a random variable some kind of a parameter for all the sample points and to detect whether these are boys girl students or some or, bo or their boys okay so using some values okay some measurement i have defined this now here you see i can clearly see a difference if i draw this as a line okay or maybe the line could be of different color so so this is let's say this is this is my uh, line so so then i can easily see that okay there this this data is a good data means if i can have a, if i make a guess about this line they can i well separate this so this is like a classification problem okay that i can classify all the data points into two sets so from oranges to apples or from apples to oranges i can distinguish this two okay so this is kind of a good data set of good data a set of good data points okay but now so, the things could be yeah so can we say that if the mathematical quantities that we have calculated like expectation value and then moments and variance and all those things so if these values give a very good approximation about an insight about the data sets then if that happens then can we say that it is a good data set and if that it is not happening you can say that it is a bad data set i mean just oh, in, a, okay. in a naive terminology Oh, oh yeah yeah so so the thing is yeah so i should not say i will define it that way but i will say okay i will mean it that way but it can be generalized it is not only only about expectation or moments but as for example here i have drawn a plane a hyperplane which okay which well separates both the different kinds of data points but here i did not use any concept of moments or expectation i just say mm -hmm. if i have a hyperplane which can Well, separate both the different data points. Then I would say this is a set of good data points. Yeah, somebody saying something. Please go ahead. No. Okay. So here I relax my conditions. Like I just said, I said, okay, it need not be only the expectation or moments, but it could be this also, like like drawing a hyperplane. And this is this is one of the fundamental problems in machine learning. how to find this data point how to find this plane for example now i'll give you a data set for this will be a very very difficult to find it <laughs> so this kind of a plane so for example uh, let me draw it like this way suppose my data points are like yeah. this yes so there are different method to separate the data i can't hear you if somebody can 
I don't understand your question. Uh, so if somebody else understands, please repeat that question. I mean, there's no, sir, now you can write it in the chat box. Something so so with the method we can say that this is the good or wrong. Now, if I understand your question, I mean you can write it in the chat box. But if I understand your question correctly, you are trying to say. Is there there are a well defined concept of good data set and bad data set? Then I would say it is no. There is no such concept of good data set, bad data set. But when you are having a lot of data sets, okay, a lot of data points, then you will have an idea what you are handling with, what you are playing with, okay. Then was, I mean, if you need less, I mean, if you need to put less amount of effort to analyze the data, then of course you will say it's a good data, okay. For example, here the example I gave you. I don't need need much time. Once I get a feeling that okay, I can draw this up a plane. But now, next time, let's say I give you data points like this. Okay, I give a data point like this, and now I want to well separate this uh, blues to red by a hyperplane, and this is even not possible. I can never have a plane which can well separate the blues from the reds. It is not even possible. So then the thing is, I am this, audible. yeah, you're audible. Go ahead, go ahead. And say something. Ha, bolo, bolo. Hello. Yes, bolo, bolo. I can't hear you. Sir, I think there's some lags or like he's hearing us after like five minutes, I think. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, there may be some internet. Yeah, network issue. Yeah. Anyway, so, so you can later on also you can type your question in the chat box. Okay. So I'll write answer. Sir, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Please. So can please, you explain the part above this? Sir, can you scroll up? Which one? Yeah. Sir, no, sir. Uh, above this? Before that. Yes, sir. Above that. Okay. So this, uh, yes, sir, there. Yeah. So let yeah. it below. Mm. Yeah. This one. Uh, the moment about, sir, about the, the main. No, sir. The, this uh, the diagram that you that you have drawn uh, here with red color. Here. Okay. Yes, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that little later also, because I need to have the concept of the sigma, and then I'll be able to discuss more about. It. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I'll talk about that. Okay, so let me first uh, let me first say that the second moment about the mean is very very important quantity, and it is called the variance of the random variable. Okay, and it is it is denoted as as let's say if the random variable is x, then it is denoted as variance of x or v of x or sigma square. Or sigma square x, where x is the random variable. So in general, we'll consider um, this notation sigma square. Okay, this is the notation of the variance. And I'll say I'll tell you why why this is important. But before that, let me say a square root, the positive square root of uh, variance. Can you guys? Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes. there was a message, so I got okay. Okay, then the positive, positive square root of the variance is called standard deviation. And this is also a very very important concept. You'll understand it maybe 15 minutes later. I'll I'll prove a theorem, and then you'll see that this is very very important concept. So are you writing something right now? Yes. But I think your screen is stuck. Oh, okay, just a minute. <sighs> 
Yeah, guys, can you see it now? Yes, yes. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So the positive square root of the variance is called the standard deviation. So since we denoted the variance as sigma square, so the standard deviation will denote it by sigma. That's it. Okay. And now I'll tell you why this guy is important, why this quantity is important, the variance. Okay. So let me draw some picture first. Okay. Let us say I have a PDF, okay, which looks like this. What happened? So, oh. Okay, so I'll I'll do some plotting. Okay, so let's say this is a histogram kind of a thing you can assume. So where this is let's say the rectangle and here it's let's say probability is 0.16 and here it is 0.13 here it is 0.12 here it is 0.10 and here it is let's say 0.07 and the corresponding values are, you can assume this is 5, this is 6, this is 7, 7, 8, 9. And let's say this is a symmetric, this is a symmetric uh, distribution. So it has these values. Uh, 0 0.13, 0 0.12, 0 0.1, and then this is 0 0.07. So this is 0 0.13, this is 0 0.12, 0 0.10, this is 0 0.07. This is one. So then, 0 0.3, 2, 1. Okay. Now, you can compute, you can check that the value of the mean for this PDF will be 5. And the variance will be 5.26. Okay. Now let me draw another distribution. Let's say I have this, which is 0 0.30. And then we have 0 0.15. Then 0 0.10 maybe. Then. Uh, excuse me, sir. Whenever you write mu we should mean that it is mu 1. Yeah, the mean, I mean, I said, yeah. The mean, the expected value. Okay, this is the expected value. Yeah, the mu 1 dashed, yeah, as for my notation. Because the different teachers are using different notations, so I want to, I'm also trying to give all the kind of flavors. Okay, but from the question paper, it will be clearly stated whether it is ex or not okay but the different books follow different notations some people follow for mean mu some people follow mu one some people follow mu dash <laughs> okay so i combined all the notations and i'm giving you something okay so that if you read another book or uh, if you had another lectures also you will not get confused okay but it here would mean it that it is the expectation and we are, what we're calling it mean okay so uh let's say here is this one five and uh, let's say this is also symmetric. So here you have 0 0.10. And uh, let's say this is 0 0.08. And uh, let's say this is 0 0.02. And if you compute the mean here, you'll find that mu value is 5. And sigma square, I already have computed this will be 3.18. You can check that. Okay. And uh, let me tell you. Okay, let me draw another one. And uh, let's say here it is. Okay, here I'm not writing all the things. Like here it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. Okay, this is 0 0.4, let's say 0 0.40. Then let's say this is approximately 0 0.18. Then it is, let's say, 0 0.10. Uh, let's say then it is 0 0.01. 
and other one is also 0 0.01 and here also the same thing let's say 0.18 and then this is 0.1 and then let's say this two are 0 0.01 0 0.01 and if you calculate the value mu will be 5 and sigma square will be 1.66 and I can draw one more uh, PDF like this yeah let's say this is 0 0.70 and here it is point, point 0.11 now let's say this is 0 0.02. Let's say this is 0 0.01 and this is also 0 0.01. And here let's say this is also symmetric. 0.11, here it is 0 0.02, here 0 0.1 and also 0 0.1. I mean 0 0.01. Here if you calculate, you will see that it is mean and sigma square equal to 0 0.88. I mean, why I'm drawing this, I'm just to, I'm just trying to tell you, mean does not give any, ab, any idea about the probability density function of all these different random variables. Because the mean value, the expected value is fixed, mu is fixed for all these PDFs. Only the sigma varies, the sigma square this, this is varying. Then the question is, here sigma square is the maximum, 5.26. Here 3.18, here 1.66, now 0 0.88. Then the question is, what does sigma square measure? What is the difference between all these pictures? If the sigma square is high, what can you say? If sigma square is low, what can you say? When the mean is fixed. Now let me tell you that if sigma square is small, then you may think that we are likely to we are likely to get a value which is close to the mean. If the sigma square is large, if the variance is large, then there is a high probability that you, the value, value means all this, one, two, three, four, the x size, okay? x1, x2, the sample points, I mean the image of the sample points, the corresponding random variable, those values, x1, x2, xn. Those values, they are not close to the mean. And let's see why. Here it is 5.16. Compared to, let's say, this 0.88, okay? It is very, very small. 0 0.88, I mean 5.26 is larger than. 0 0.88. And now see here, this point, let's say 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 4, 3, 2, 1. See, these values, what did I say? Large, the greater value, sigma is coming, big value if you have for the variance, that means the x size are not close to the mean. But small value means, small value of the variance means the excise values, okay, they are close to the mean. Now, can you see from this picture here? Can you see that? The probability is, probability of getting the value close to the mean is higher. Can you, can you see it from here, from these pictures? Yes, sir. Anybody has any doubt? I'll repeat this again for the last time, okay? Small value of the variance means we are likely to get a value which is close to the mean. A large value of the variance means there is a high probability that getting a value not close to the mean. Okay, here let me just write it down and you can think about it this later. I think you can, this is homework, you can understand this. 
the uh, let's say small value. See everywhere mean is fixed by the way, okay? Small value of sigma square means that what means that there is there is a high probability or most likely there is a high probability or large probability what do we say the high probability or with high probability okay, the value probability the value you get it close to the mean whereas for small value oh sorry so large value not small for large value of sigma square there is there is a greater probability of getting a value that is not close to the mean yeah see okay let me just explain this here mu equal to 5 mu equal to 5 mu equal to 5 5 means here here okay here and here okay see the probability is quite high to get a value around 5 because probability of getting 5 is 0 0.7 probability of getting 6 is 0 0.11 probability of getting 4 is 0 0.11 probability of getting 7 is 0 0.02 and so on so larger the value is okay because you see probability of getting 5 is high and probability of getting 6 okay it little close than probability of getting 9 and see the other one probability of getting 5 is 0 0.6 this is higher 0 0.6 Okay, and then this is what did I say? I I got confused. Anyway, so, so that's anyway, point one six. You said point six. Oh, anyway, so anyway, so so the thing is, you just try to explain this phenomena from this one, from this picture, whether this whatever i have written the homework whether this explains this pdfs or not in this pdfs the mean value is fixed but we are only changing the variance and then we want to see we want to get a meaning we have to get a feeling about how the different variance when the mean is fixed okay tells you about the data when the value variance is large when the variance is small and we said large value of sigma square the the variance okay then the high probability that the value is not close to the mean and the other one we said when the variance is small then it's high likelihood that uh, i mean it's a greater probability that the value is close to the mean so we have to explain this using this uh, in this pdfs okay yeah now once you know the sigma square, we can define other measures also. I'm running out of time today. I don't know why. <laughs> so, so the symmetry, okay, whether the PDF is symmetry or not, symmetric about some point or not, okay. If we want to measure that, okay. So, like the variance is the second moment about the mean, and if you consider the third moment about the mean, okay then it measures symmetry. So every moment has its meaning, symmetry or skewness, okay? 
So earlier it was whether the probability of getting a value close to the mean is high or not. Okay. So here it measures the symmetry or skewness. Okay. Of the distribution. Distribution. What about the first okay. moment? Is the what? Sir, what about the first moment? What does it measure? First measure is just the distance from the expectation. Because if value of k is one, see expectation is say k equal to one. If you take expectation, it is always zero. Mu one is equal to e of x minus mu one. But guys, can you see? It? I'm yes, writing sir. something. Yes. yes sir. Sir. Okay. Now since this is mu, so this is zero. So moment, first moment about the mean is the mean is zero. I mean, there is nothing, there is no motion. Moment means you can always consider it related to motion. So moment about the mean is nothing. When you consider the first moment, but second moment, third moment, this will give you some values. This one, mu one is zero. Okay, uh, okay. so. The symmetry of skewness, what I was saying. Yeah, so yes, sir, whether... I think the screen is again frozen. So, frozen. Uh, sir, wait. So, distance, so what does distance from the mean would mean? Hmm? Like distance from the mean, uh, what would no, no. that really indicate? No, no, not distance, but about hmm. the mean, x minus mu, x minus mu, the value of x from mu. Sir, so the like first XI, would also X, measure asymmetry. No, no. Moment about the mean, I'm saying. I, I define two concepts. One is moment of the random variable or the kth moment, kth moment of the random variable. And second one is defined kth moment about the mean. Now, which one you are talking about? Sir, I'm talking about uh the moment about the mean so the first yeah, moment yeah. of the mean yeah so then this k value is one can you see the screen now yes sir yeah so this value k this is the kth moment right so first moment means the k value of k is one you take k is equal to one so mu one is equal to what mu one is expectation of x minus mu right but mu is so if you if you use the property linear linear property of the expectation so who, which we proved here, E of X plus B, you see here, E of X plus B is equal to A times the X plus B. We have a similar kind of situation there. A is one there and B is equal to mu. B is equal to, I think, minus mu, okay, which is a constant. So if you now write it here, so if you just use the proper expectation, so X is Expectation of x minus mu is the x minus mu, which is equal to zero because mu is equal to x itself. So moment, the first moment about the mean is nothing. It is zero. Now the second moment around the mean is called the variance. And now, so I just defined a formula, which is like the kth moment. Now I am telling you what does it signify about the set of data points. So I said, okay, uh, the second moment, okay, about the mean, which you call variance, it has a meaning. And this is the meaning, I said. When the mean is fixed, then this is what is the meaning. Okay, I mean, if you want to know what does it signify, then this is what it signifies. And similarly, the third, some in some books, actually, they will recall also the kth order moment. Okay, I'm just adding kth moment. So in some books, you'll also find kth order moment. I don't use the term order because order has different meaning when, we'll, I mean, you'll get to know about that when we talk about, okay, moment generating function. Order means, okay, so when you have a series up to certain order, there are terms certain up to that. After that, it is not there, okay? So this is kind of the feeling of order because I did not define moment generating function yet, so I didn't use the word order, okay? But then some people will also say kth order moment, okay, about the mean. So here I'm saying just kth moment about the mean. 
and I am explaining now what is its physical significance about the data points. So one is the variance, and what did I say? Variance measures this one. Whether a given value xi is you would, any given xi is will be close to the mean or not. Whether there is a high probability it will be close to the mean or not, and this is given by the value of the variance. Okay, if variance is small, I mean if the mean is fixed, let's say the variance is if you have two set of data points, and in both the cases your mean is fixed, okay, or the expectation is fixed, only the variance changes. And for one data set, you have uh, low variance. I mean, the variance is a small value, and the other one is a big value. Okay, then what does it mean? What is the difference about the data points? So I said, when this is, uh, this, this means uh, when the variance is a small value, like here, variance is a small value. What is? Sometimes my pain doesn't, I don't know why. Okay, so, so for example, here 0 0.88 is small compared to 5.26. And here what I'm saying is because the variance is small, it means that uh, the probability that you will get a value close to mean is high. And when, when this is big, this uh, variance is uh, big, it means the probability of getting a value uh, not close to the mean is high. Okay. Uh, you have any question? Can you hear me, guys? Yes, yes sir. Can I hear you? Yes. Okay. 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 So another concept which I was talking about is I think yeah. So so the symmetry or skewness. Okay. Uh, whether the distribution is symmetric like here it has a symmetry kind of a picture right in symmetry so about certain point so then the next idea is uh, how do you measure symmetry or skewness of the distribution i mean can i can i conclude about skewness or lack of symmetry okay skewness and how much skew it is so it is called the lack of symmetry or symmetry okay of a distribution from the from the moments about the mean and yes, it is possible. Uh, so the symmetry or the skewness. So if this is skewness means lack of symmetry as well. So it is also called lack of symmetry of the distribution is let's say given by. So this is a new measure, which is let's say mu three by sigma q. Now you can find out the value mu three by sigma three for all these data points, and you can conclude whether this is skewed or not, whether this is symmetric or there's a lack of symmetry, okay? Okay, and the next uh, observation, okay, which is, I'm running out of time today, I don't know why. So anyway, I thought I'll prove something that in order to show you that uh, it is the importance of standard deviation. Say here I am talking about importance of uh, variance, okay? But we also defined a concept which is square root of the variance, and that also plays uh, plays a big role in order to analyze the data. Anyway, so I'll maybe uh, next we will talk about that. So sigma yes. cube that you have written and mu three both are same thing, no? No, no. So this mu three is the third moment, third uh, moment about the about mean. The mean about the mean. And yes. Sigma three is okay. Okay, just a minute. Sigma, Sigma square. has square in the in its uh, moment and mu three has cube in its moment. Yes, yes, yes. This one, sigma square and mu three is this. Oh, what I'm writing two, and huh. this is three. So they are not same. Uh, so sigma three, sigma three, I've written here, sir. Sigma three, so I didn't define. This is just a notation. Oh, it is... okay, you haven't defined yet. Yeah, no, okay. I didn't define means sigma three means it is, you know, sigma which is standard deviation and the power of that, q power of that. It's a, Third it's a, power oh, of that. standard deviation raised to power three. Three, yes, 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 standard deviation raised to the power three. Okay, okay. And here it is sigma square. I thought maybe it is also another notation where we just use uh, oh. sigma three instead of u three. Oh, like we no, use no, sigma no. square for that now, so that's why I asked this question. No, oh, okay, okay, okay. I got it. Yeah, okay. 
So another observation here you see is sigma square, meaning this is just x minus mu whole square. Okay, uh, so which is basically expectation of x square minus 2 mu times x plus mu square. So since expectation is linear, so it will act on all this individual values. So expectation of 2 mu x plus expectation of mu square. So this is expect square. So this is expectation of x square minus 2 will come out because I already proved the property that you remember that a times x is equal to a. If you scale it up, the expectation automatically gets scaled. So here we have this kind of situation. This 2 mu times x, so 2 mu will come out. This e times x plus e of mu square, we already proved that for a constant random variable, it is always the same. So expectation is equal to this. So then this is e of x square minus uh, e x is itself mu itself. So it is mu square plus mu square. So this is expectation of x square minus mu square. So here I can write this as x square minus e x is whole square because mu is e x. So this is the mean. So this is another way to look at the variance. So variance is nothing but expectation of x square minus square of the expectation. So whenever you get the data points and then make a square of it and then take the expectation, from there you subtract the square of the expectation of the original random variable, square of the original values, okay? I mean, yeah, so, so square of the expectation of the original values. So then this is what is called actually the variance. So if you take the square of the data points and then take the expectation, and if you first take the expectation and then square it, then what is the difference? And this is measured by the variance, okay? This is another way to look at the same thing. So, and this is, okay, so since we are running out of time, so next observation, I will not prove it. So I'll just, because I need to finish this. So, I mean, this is very simple to prove, but uh, let me say, is a homework. If x has variance, variance sigma square, then we show the variance of x plus b. So there's a nice function of and a variable. This will be a square times sigma square. So this is the sigma square also gets scaled here, even if you take an affine function. This is homework. Just use the definition of variance. Okay, like here I have defined. I have used the definition of variance. Similar thing you do it here and just prove that it is nothing but a squared times sigma square. And it has a nice meaning now. What happens if b equal to zero? If b equal to zero, then it is just the variance of ax. And it does not change the variance. That means if you scale the data points, okay, the variance does not change. Variance remain fixed. Expectation will change. The variance remain fixed. Because variance may have the spread it, how much spread it is. The spreading is not changing. And this is very, very important. And if uh, A equal to one, what do you mean? That means you add some values to the data points. Like I said, the marks, total marks. Suppose I did a mistake in the question because there is something wrong and I give an extra additional marks to everybody, okay? So I added something to this. And how it is change it? It remains the same, sigma square because a is equal to one, x plus b. So it does not change. Here also, it does not change correspond to the original, x plus b does not change. So it has no effect on b. Okay, so these two are simple observations from this, okay, which are important. Yeah, guys, sorry, I mean, today I messed up. I think <laughs> I could not finish time in time. So what I expected to discuss, I could not do that. Anyway, so if you have questions, you can ask me. If you have class, you may please leave. Sir, uh, tomorrow we will have test in the class hours, no? Yes, yes, yes. So tomorrow there is no class. Yeah. Okay. And the syllabus will be, I mean, before what was taught, uh, rand I mean, before random variable. And before random variable. Yes, yes, yes. Before random variable. Yeah. Okay, sir. sir, 